Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today we're going to be taking a look at this MacBook Pro. This is model A2442. I've already done a display on one of these and I'm thinking that's what this one is. So this is, the story behind this one is that when you plug it into a, to a charger, you get the sound that it's charging, but there's no image. And it, typically when there's no image, it's either an issue with the display or an issue with the backlight. And most of the time you can determine that by simply turning it on. If there's no backlight, then you'll be able to see like a faint Apple logo. If there's no display on this particular model, sometimes you can see the cracks on the display and sometimes the cracks are such that you can't even see where the cracks are, but you have no image, but it still can be a display issue. So that's what I think this is, I'm not quite sure. And I'm really just filming this intro just in case something weird comes up because I've already done a display. I've already done a display video, but on the off chance we find something different, then uh, then we'll go from there. So let's get started. All right, I'm starting this repair off in a very interesting place. I was under the impression that there was a display issue with this MacBook Pro I'm working on. I thought it was the display, so I removed it. We'll get to that in a second. And then I realized it was a backlight issue after testing a new display. And looking at the backlight itself, there's nothing that I can see that's visually damaged. And typically you'll see burn components if there's an issue with the backlight. So I believe that the issue is on the motherboard. So I'm gonna take a look at that in a second. But in the meantime, I need to get this back together. And if any of you have ever removed these displays on this, uh, on an A2442 or an A2485, you'll know how difficult they are to get off without damaging. The fact that I was able to get this one off without breaking it is incredible. I'm gonna get out a really thin test of tape here so I can re-adhere the rubber gasket. And I have to do this without messing with the backlight. I'm just gonna go along the black area in here. And by the way, this is how you'd get to the backlight if you're replacing it alone. You'd then be able to lift out the backlight and replace it with another one. Which if the reason you're doing that is because the, the flex cable was damaged, it's definitely cheaper to try to do it that way than buy a whole new display. All right, we've got the thin border adhesive so i'm going to go ahead and pop off the little protectors just like that now i need to reinstall the rubber gasket it's got these little extrusions that stick out that help you guide things into the little slots all right i've got it all installed i like to leave these side bits up because of the screws that go in the corner it's kind of really hard to work around them and it's easy to fold these back under when the time comes now I need to go and apply adhesive between, or basically on top of the edge of the little lip of the gasket, inwards towards the backlight without touching the backlight, all the way around these three sides. For that, I'm gonna go up a size and tape just a little bit wider than the previous one. And see how it just goes right up to that edge nicely. Now I'll just continue this up, making sure it's nice and seated in there. All the way around. All right, so you can see I tried it around the corners with all the cuts. Go ahead and pull off the protectors to that. Now I need to make sure I thoroughly get all of the dust that might have fallen onto the backlight, as well as the display. And this is basically how you would install a new display anyway, minus all the complicated installation of the bracket here. Make sure that's nicely seated still and without touching the actual inside of the display. We'll flip this guy around. I just noticed a little bit of dust there. Make sure that flex cable stays out of the way. This guy comes back up. There, we'll slide it in. Now I need to make sure that the top is being seated properly. We'll go along and compress it down inside. And there we go. It's all in. Man, I'm getting fingerprints all over this thing. All right, now I just need to install the eight big black screws and then the four little screws that Hold this and the flex cables down. All right, now that those are in, I was able to fold these rubber sides back under. You can see how this one was rubbing against uh, the, the case 
There's a slight bend in here, so I bent it back so it shouldn't rub as much anymore. Go ahead and put back these screws. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put back these screws. And now we'll grab this bracket and we'll slap it back in. Put back its screws. Right, and then we'll take the little glass piece. I'm gonna throw on some new adhesive real quick. I don't think the other will stay too well. And then we'll gently install this so that the screen can be all back together. And just like that, we are back in business, I think. And this is what I just barely noticed. It's hard to see. Take us under a microscope. There's a little bit of what looks like corrosion. You can see kind of like a little rust right there. This chip, or I'm not exactly sure what this is, but there's like a crack almost in it right there. And these ones look corroded kind of as well. You wouldn't pick it up just looking at it, but if I hit the light just right, you can see how it's like creased right there. So I think that some moisture got to this area and that's why we have no backlight. All right, so we've got the motherboard out. You can see it doesn't look that bad from here. But I've got a donor board. You can see it looks a little bit better, as in there's no evidence of anything. So we're going to go into the microscope and transfer all of the components that I can tell need to be swapped. All right, so I'm going to just cover up the connector here with some captain tape to help, you know, prevent any heat from getting to it. And you can kind of see how this area has evidence, a little bit of like rust over here, some gr gritty stuff here. Little oxidation there, but this component, let's see if I can show it. You, see, you can see how it's raised up in the middle, like it saw a lot of heat and it cracked. These are all the exact same, they're the DC21 BV, and they're slightly different directions. I'm gonna start by removing this guy because it seems like the issue. Come in with a little bit of flux, and if anyone's wondering, I've got my temperature set at 450 Celsius, airflow about 50%. that off. Add some flux. <clears throat> Come in with my soldering iron and let's freshen up those pads. All right now with the multimeter I'm just going to come in and check and see what this is reading. So this is straight to short to ground, short, short, OL. I was initially getting 0.4 on these three and then OL on this one but then it switched and now it's just straight up continuity. Here we go 0.44, 0.44, 0.43 and then I Go back to here and it looks like it's closing whatever circuits there or something. I'm not exactly sure. I don't have the data sheet for this component. All right, with the multimeter, we're reading 0.55 on this one. 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.
I'm gonna dim the lights in the room so we can see this backlight one more time. You can kind of see now with the lights on with the backlight, that display that was on it did have a crack in it. Hence what we have right here. Go ahead and quickly disconnect stuff and then we'll reconnect it. I wanna see that Apple logo again. All right, now the battery is connected. That's connected, that's connected. Let's open it up and you can see it wants to show, it's faint, it's there. Hmm. The question is, what do I do now? All right, so I'm just curious. I'm reconnected the screen that we put back together earlier. I really wanna see if it'll just decide to come back on or if there's really an actual issue with the backlight inside the display, which could be easily the case. I see an Apple logo right there, a loading bar, just no backlight. All right, so now that we've determined that it is in fact an issue with the backlight, on top of the issue that we fixed today with the backlight on the motherboard, the next step is going to be deciding where to go from here, whether or not to replace the whole top unit or to replace just the backlight. So stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments below what you do. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in part two of this video.